Okay, so let's get started. Uh, attempt number two to throw two pots and a, conjoining them. Conjoining, joining. I don't know. All right, I got my towel close to me. I got a ruler. Uh, a lot of you guys know I don't trust myself with the calipers. Uh, I always move them, so a ruler to me is a lot more reliable when measuring uh, pretty much anything. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Ooh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave that in there. I'll start with my wheel going a little slower than uh, I would if it was a smaller piece of clay, just to sort of get a little bit of a grip on the shape that I'm working with. By going slower, I have a little bit more control to kind of smooth out those sides, get those wonky pieces that are sticking out into my pot. And now I'll speed it up a little so I can start to cone it up. Again, you guys have heard my tip um, if your bat is doing that tick. One of two things, you can either not push down into the clay to make it centered, which is also uh, making the bat move with that larger hole, or you can stop your wheel, take some dry clay, make sure it's super dry, like rock hard, and sort of stick some rocks in there. It's the back of my wood tool. To, hmm, can't find my wood tool. We'll go ahead and use this giant uh, rib that I have. Just sort of shove it into the holes. There we go. And after a while, if you don't center quickly, that clay is going to start to get wet and a little more malleable, but until then, it stops. Um, or you can just kind of pick a spot hovering above your wheel to be your center. It's a little more complicated to explain in a video um, what I do. Go ahead and open up. Wheel going fast again. I'm going to open up in two parts, only because I start to get a little dry, and as I get dry, this clay starts to come off onto my fingers. I'm thinking no foot, so I can go down a little lower. You may have noticed that little glitch. Uh, I have a tendency sometimes of throwing pots and not recording. <laughs> Need another glitch here because I forgot some tools. Notice when I do open up a larger piece of clay, in order to help me stay centered, I'll actually use my hand as sort of a guard to make that stop that clay from going a little uh, off center as I open. Now this is gonna be the top of my pot and I don't want my top to be super wide. I'm sorry. It's gonna be the bottom of my pot, so I don't want the bottom to be super pot wide. I'm sort of aiming for this um, bulbous, not super bulbous, but curved pot that looks tall and slender, but kind of stands on a narrow bottom. I really want that negative space underneath to show the lift. So I have it open about five to six inches. 
Remember my first pull is my corrective pull. My first pull is the one to sort of even out those walls so that I don't have to think about it as I'm pulling the rest of the walls. You can refer back to some of my other videos about my corrective pull. Again, I always encourage your hands to be attached to each other, but at one point your pot's gonna get too big. So how do you get them attached? Well, at this point, you can see I just made sure that my hands were attached. But if I throw one pull after another, this arm over here remembers how it felt when it was attached. So the muscle memory allows it to stay as stable as it could be even though your hands are not attached to each other. And I wanna make sure that I'm not ending up with a pointy lip on the top or it's super thin because I need that other pot to sit on top of this pot. Now we wanna think about and imagine what the whole pot's gonna look like. And I wanna make sure that I'm gonna get a good flow and a good transition between the top and the bottom. If you have this flare out a little, then your final pot is gonna look like that. It's kind of like when you used to put paint on one side of a piece of paper and then squish it to the other side. And you could clearly see where the two fold was, we don't want to see where the fold was. Just want to get a little bit more from the bottom than what I had. Again, looking for evenly consistent as I'm going to try really not ha to have to trim this when they're finally put together. Okay. Look at the inside, get off as much as I can. my trusty ruler. So the only down part of using a ruler is that it often has clay on it. <laughs> so you gotta wipe it. Um, although I'm American, I do tend to measure in centimeters. Gives me a little bit of an easier way to remember than dealing with quarter inches. As a potter now, I have to use reading glasses, but I'm gonna just run with it. So we're looking about 21 inches from outside of the lip to the other outside of the lip. Now what I try and do is I keep the first pot near me. I wanna really learn and get into my memory what that shape is. And what's gonna be the best way to make it look like the transition is seamless. So I don't want a completely different shape. I mean, unless you're aiming for something that, um, you know, has a lot of curves to it or an odd shape. But for this one, I'm just gonna try and sort of mirror what I had going on in the bottom. A lot of people don't realize that your back can be upside down. I know that sounds strange, but as you start using these masonite bats, your bat's gonna warp a little. And if you put your bat on where it's not um, concave and it convex, I guess, um, it will be completely impossible to center your clay. So again, we 
You always want to start off on the easiest foot possible. back to my other pot a few times. Now this one, I don't really care about my bottom because this is gonna be the top of my pot. So I can go all the way down if I want to. Sometimes it's a little satisfying to know that you don't have to care about the bottom of your pot. <laughs> now remember, and I forgot, I want that bottom part this part is gonna be matching up. So I wanna make sure that the, that the top of my pot is the same as um, the width is the same. The width of the top of the pot is the same of, as there. So as I start to open up, I wanna make sure that my bottom, a little bit of a, funkiness going down that distracted me. Sorry about that, guys. So it's kind of awesome about getting rid of the bottom of your pot is if you have an air bubble on the bottom, you just go ahead and take it out. Sorry about that. It's got slightly distracted by a by poor wedging. Poor wedging may affect me this entire pot, actually. I do have a little bit of a of a wonk here because of that air bubble on the bottom. But I'm gonna end up cutting this off, but I wanna wait till the last possible minute. If I cut it off now, I'm taking off like four ounces of clay, but if I wait until it's the tallest it can be, then I'll be taking a lot less off. But the key is to try and ignore the wonk as you're pulling, not let it get distract you. What it actually is is a big chunk of hard stuff hanging out about four inches from, uh, three inches from the bottom of my pot. I don't know. It is what it is. So again, how do we take the pot, the lip of our pot off? We're gonna wet our hands, or we can take a firm grip, not really tight, but tight enough grip on the lip of our pot. I'm gonna do it over here. We're gonna take our pool cue, we're gonna hold it close to the pin, our pin tool that I call the pool cue. We're gonna lean it on our finger and we're gonna drive it in. I'll try and do it over here so you can see what I'm doing. Slowly drive it in with the wheel going relatively fast until you hit your finger and then lift. Let's start our ruler. Nowhere near, that's 18 inches. <laughs> Size and distance is not my thing. That's why I use a ruler. Yeah, I'm sorry, 18 centimeters. Wait a minute, she just said she uses centimeters. That two centimeters is not a lot. It's just a little bit of an extra push on your inside hand to make it a little wider and hope you don't go too wide. Almost there. Isn't that hard to believe that that was 21 centimeters? It was. Mm -hmm. 
So in order to get a little bit more height, I'm gonna try and get a little bit more clay from the bottom. Put a little more pressure on there so that I can jack up the wall that I already have on top. And this way, by stretching it out, I'm not necessarily making it thinner to get that width that I'm aiming for. Might also be just that my shape is a little too round up on the top when I'm aiming for it to be a little straighter. Which is great that I have the other pot in the background of what I'm looking at right here. Sorry, I took my hand off of that too fast. I get so excited that I had such perfectly, so perfectly placed them. There we go, 21 centimeters. Now in doing that, I made my lip a little thinner than it was before, so I'm just gonna compress that. Make sure I'm compressing, I didn't change this shape. Again, I'm looking for the sort of pot that smoothly transitions into each other. So I want that shape to be pretty similar. Okay, I'm gonna, although I have no bottom, I'm still gonna get the water out. I want the least amount of moisture around my pots. I want them to start to dry, and if they're in a wet atmosphere, that's not gonna happen. But in the converse, when you're trying to keep something wet, you do sort of spray some water around it to give it um, more of a greenhouse atmosphere. But when you're starting to get it dry so that you can attach stuff, I like this little curve here. Then you want it as dry as possible. Again, this is gonna be the top of my pot is the bottom. Let that to make you think. So I definitely want to get up as much as I can. If I wanted to add a little bit more of a lip to it, then maybe I'd leave a little bit more so I could do some pulling after I attach it. Okay, again, go ahead and dry my atmosphere. That one little hard piece of clay that I had in the very beginning is definitely messing with me right around here. Sort of what causing this little bit of a wonk, which again, hopefully you won't be able to see once the pot's moving.
Okay, so a day later, um, here I am, the pieces are attached. We are a little drier, I think, than I want, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a pull. I'm gonna see if I can get these to be a little more um, fluid in their line here. So I have my sponge on the outside. I don't believe in rehydrating pots, but the sponge is gonna sorta make it a bit easier for me. I actually have my fingers pointed so that I can try and really seal up over here. I'm gonna hang out over here for a little bit at the joint. I'm gonna keep on going, maybe stretch this out just a little bit if I have the ability. It's funny when it starts to move, it's not as round. Now I left my bottom, this is, remember, this is the bottom of my pot from when I did my second one. It's a little thicker, so I'm hoping to be able to get a little bit more of a pull up in here, putting a little bit more pressure, get it a little more finished. Again, I'm gonna cut that lip off to get a little more even. I wanna compress the side of this. I'm gonna try a bunch of different tools. I'm gonna try a small wooden plate rib. Um, kind of get rid of, I'm gonna start always closer to the bottom, pushing with my inside hand up against that rib. The rib sort of serves as a wall and you're sort of pushing the clay up against it to get a nice, even consistent flow as you're going around. Now I'm choosing to work with the flat side just so that I can seal it up. But normally with the ribs, when I'm working on something round, I'll use the rounder side. This flat side is gonna give me a straight line, but that doesn't really serve my purpose. So now I'll flip it around and use the rounder side so I can deal with just one inch of it as I go around. Over here, I'm gonna kinda get into that slightly thicker spot where I join the two pieces. Maybe make the effort, there you go, you start to sort of come off of the pot a little bit. A little bit more that rode up with it. I'll get that piece of stuff off of there in a bit. Just always want to complete my motion a little bit more. There you go. Make sure those don't get into the pot. Uh, it's actually why I, I tend to prefer this metal rib. Let's go with the flat side again to work on smoothing this part out a little bit. Again, I might have missed my window for being doing too much up on the top here. But we're going to see what we can do. That's about as smooth as we're really gonna get the, the side there. I'm gonna concentrate a little on the top. This is where I kind of think about the form. I'm wondering if I thin this out a little bit, I'm able to sort of collar it in a little. I could always add a third piece that gives it a little bit more of a shape. Um, maybe not on this one. <laughs> Notice I just got my elbows a little closer to my body. It causes me to be able to be a little more stable since the pot is not completely going in a circle as you can probably tell based on when the wheel is moving. Thin this out a little. I don't really love the flared out lip. Um, aesthetically, I think it grounds the pot to the table a little more than I'd like it to. slip here. A little messy. I'm sort of just working this a little, softening it up. We'll see if I can get something a little more interesting going on at the top. I'm going to go with just a little bit of a finished sort of ribbon up on top. Um, the clay has gotten a little too dry for me to really collar it in, which was the suggestion of one of my members yesterday. 
maybe video number two. And I don't want to just have it cut off there. So I'm going to, with my finger, do a little bit of a micro pull. Thin that out a little. Hopefully this thicker lip will um, hold its shape a little since I am playing with it so much. Grab that metal rib again. What I actually did is, in cleaning it up, I found I had a little bit extra clay to work with up on this top three inches or so. Just sort of managed to thin that out just a little. To find my lip. And I think at this point, we're just definitely gonna have to call it a pot. So I'm gonna get the water on the inside. I'm gonna actually do it with my hand. I stand up a little here. Let's see if I can get a little bit more off the bottom, because as I said earlier, I have no desire to trim this. If I knew where my wood tool was. Hopefully, my whole goal always is to make my outside look like my inside. So when we are using our wood tool to trim the excess off, we wanna pay attention to that. We don't wanna trim off, you know, pounds of clay, but we wanna trim off enough where, get a little air. I like when pots lift off of the table. All right, I think it's time, guys. We're just going to call it a pot. A pot. Thanks so much.